to me, this is my heart, it's imperative, very important, that you, on a daily basis, identify with your new creation. I mean, don't identify with your flesh, but your new creation, who you are in Christ now. <clears throat> in other words, the gift uh, that God's given you, because what he's done, Christ has uh, dealt with sin, and now you're reconciliated with him. Now, I'm sure you say, well, I've heard that before, or I've heard that reconciliation with God, and yeah, that's kind of nice, but I don't think that even myself uh, fully understand the position that I've been put in, the gift that he's given me. And, and that is what I'm trying to draw out. I'm trying to work it to where I have a better understanding of it, uh, where it becomes a reality. And you say, well, what, what are you talking about? Well, he's, Jesus said, you got to be born again. So I know what my first birth is. You know what that is. That's Adam. Uh, that's your, uh, that's your, your soul, your flesh, uh, the, your nature. And uh, we've been told that it's evil. It uh, uh, it doesn't want to do what God wants it to do. And so God's done something. Uh, instead of trying to repair it, <clears throat> what he's done, he just gives us a new birth. Not a bad deal. He's not trying to repair the old car. He just gives us a new car. Uh, we're new in the spirit. And, and, and so now we're talking supernatural. We're talking something spiritual. Uh, something you can't see in the natural mind. If, uh, Pastor uh, Dickerson the other night said, you can't figure this out uh, in your mind. It's something that uh, uh, you try to reason with it, and it just doesn't click. It takes a supernatural spirit, the Holy Spirit, to quicken spiritual things. Fleshly things understand flesh things. Spirit things, if you're a spirit, have a spirit, have God's spirit, then it will understand spiritual things. So when I'm saying that God has cleansed you from the penalties of your sin and has given you uh, a new position, that position that you have by faith, believing, faith means believing what he has said about you. That's what faith is. God says, I reconciliated uh, consolidate, uh, you back with, I dealt with sin, now I'm the mediator, and so now sin's been dealt with, and I've given you the Holy Spirit quickened inside of your spirit. Now, that's a mouthful, but man, that's so powerful. In other words, think who you are now by faith. You say, well, I don't feel that. Well, that's because you're looking at your flesh. you got to understand you can't look at your flesh. You can't feel your flesh, uh, reason with your flesh. That, uh, that'll always get you messed up. You have to say flesh is flesh and spirit is spirit. I'm not mixing what's in the flesh over and what the spirit is. The spirit is, and this is what the spirit is saying. He says that I've dealt with your sins and I'm no longer counting your sins against you. You're still sinning, but he's not counting them. Now, how can that be? What kind of person uh, still has sin, still gives in to sin, but yet God says, I'm no longer counting them towards you, and that I've given you my spirit to bind with your spirit. Now, this is how I want you to think. Renew your mind daily. For what? This is the way to think, that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. My spirit doesn't sin. The new creation, the new creature that I am, I'm Saint Roger. I'm righteous, holy, perfect, sinless before God. Now, am I talking about my flesh or am I talking about my spirit? Well, I'm talking about my spirit. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Old things are passed away. All things are new. What's new? I'm a new creation. I'm no longer the old creation. Even though that monkey's still on my back, I'm not part of that anymore. God doesn't see me. You say, when I sin, I, I understand I sin because that's the nature of what I do in the flesh. But at that moment, I realized that God has dealt with that once and for all, and there is no condemnation. It's not going to separate me from him. In other words, my position as perfect and righteous and holy before the Lord is as solid as a rock. 
Nothing can move that. Scripture says a height, depth, width, length. The love of God. What is the love of God? It is <coughs> unconditional love that he dealt with sin through his son and no longer imputes sin against me. And he doesn't you either. Now, if you ever start believing that, and that becomes a reality, you're going to grow. You're going to have fruit coming out of you, out of your spirit, your inner man. You're going to see more power, more strength. You're going to see more boldness. You're going to see more self-control. But it comes from knowing who you are and believing that. And you say, well, I have a hard time. I understand that. Uh, 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 Pastor Dickerson said, uh, you have to call your flesh a liar. That's good, isn't it? You have to say you're lying. You're a lion. Your flesh lies. It tells you that you're not good enough, that you're a failure, and that you, you don't read your Bible enough, and you don't go to church enough, and you don't give enough money enough, and you don't do this much. He, the devil's always... God doesn't want you to do anything in the flesh, how good it may be, outside the fact that he considers it. He doesn't consider it. He only considers what you believe in the Spirit. What you say, this is who I am now. I am complete in Christ. The devil says, you're not. The Bible says, I am. The Bible says, no, you need to do this. You need to keep this. You need to keep this regulations. You need, and the, and the, and the Spirit says, no, Jesus kept it all for me. And that's the gift he gives me. He's put me whatever I was going to try to earn in the flesh by doing good deeds. Christ has earned it for me in the spirit and gives it to me freely. Now, he just wants me to confess that, believe that. What is it? What did he give me? Well, uh, he made me right, sinless, perfect. Why did so? That's who I am now in the spirit. I can't see that. But you know what? The more that I say it, the more reality it becomes. And wow, all of a sudden, I see the results in my own life. I, I, I see better attitudes. I, when I sin, I know how to deal with sin now. I go, I, just like Paul said, Paul would say, that's not me. Don't identify with the flesh. It's dead to God. It's going back to the grave. Don't give it no second thought. Don't think about your problems. Don't think about circumstances. Don't think about, don't meditate on those things. They're there for one purpose, to bring doubt and uncertainty into your life and fear. That's all. Whatever it may be, don't focus. God says, it's dead to me. I've made you a new creation. You're a new person in Christ Jesus. And I've given you everything. All things are yours. Everything pertaining to life. That's all scripture. Why don't we believe that? Well, we hear it, but it goes away, doesn't it? I've, I've actually talked to people and labored and talked to them, and they're looking at me, and then they kind of get it, you know? And yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's the only way you can deal with this. You, you have to see yourself as Christ wants to see you how Christ has put you. And you know, they start nodding their head. And you thought, wow, man, I'm making some headway here. These people are going to really start to grow in the Lord. They're going to start seeing more victory in their life than they've ever seen before. But the next time I'm seeing them, they're talking trash again. They're talking about uh, doing good works and trying to do this and trying to do that. And, and you know, I got to make it in heaven. So I, I've got to work harder. I, the Lord's coming back anytime now. And, and uh, I, you know, I've got to, you know, I've got to get my life cleaned up. Well, good luck with that. What happened to them? What happened to the person I was telling them about who they were in Christ? How quickly they forgot. How quickly they reverted back of thinking that they need to do something else. I want you out there. Listen, I want you to be free. I want you to know what freedom really is. I want you to know that you, your flesh will not rob you of your salvation. I want you to know that the devil's after 
uh, uh, to bring insecurity to you. He wants to creep in just enough for you to believe one little thing that, that maybe God, maybe God is, uh, you know, maybe God's going to hold that against me. That's, he wants to bring something in. You have to say, no, no, that's a lie. My flesh is dead. God no longer brings it before me. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Now, get in mind, if you don't understand the Holy Spirit, then you don't understand anything I'm saying. You say, well, how am I supposed to be better? Are you telling me that I can just, that sin doesn't matter anymore? Well, sure, sin matters in the world. You go out here and rob a bank, it really does matter. You go cheat on your wife, it really does matter. Sin does matter. Uh, there's consequences for it. But in Christ, God says, I'm not counting them. I've given you a new spirit, and I want you to dwell on who you are now. That's where I'm getting at. The more you dwell on the power source that's inside of you by reminding yourself, not letting doubt come in, not letting circumstances come in, not letting what goes, uh, what you see around you come in, but say, that's part of the world. That is going back to the grave, but God's doing a new work. And that new work is in me. I am part of the kingdom of God today. When Christ came, died, and buried, and resurrected, I'm, that's who I am. I am that person in him that dealt with sin once and for all and raised up in new life and new spirit. This is a spiritual walk. I'm talking spiritually now. Your flesh is going, I don't understand it. That's because the spirit is not revealing Maybe you don't have the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're like Nicodemus when Jesus said, you must be born again. And Nicodemus says, you mean I've got to enter back into my mother's womb? How's that going to work? Are you that carnal? Are you that carnal out there thinking that when I'm saying that in the spirit, born of Christ, born of his seed, that I am a spirit being made perfect, sinless and perfect. And then your carnal mind's going to be like Nicodemus and says, oh, well, I guess I can just continue to sin. Are you that carnal? If you're born again, you're born of his spirit. I have a nature in me. It's been written in my heart and my mind. And as I remind myself who I am in Christ and, and, and call the flesh a liar, it produces great things in God. And we want to be that light. I, I, I've recently, you know, I share this with people and I share it with people. And sometimes I feel like just giving up. I mean, they, they're they so blind. Uh, they still got the veil of Moses over their face. They're still seeing that it's about works and church and attendance, and, and they're falling after preachers and uh, and all types of stuff. But when I, if I asked them, I said, are you born again? And they, well, they, they, well yes. I, I said, what does that mean? Well, I, I'm not for sure. Let me tell you something. If you don't know what born again means, you're not born again. If if I asked you if you're a Christian, I said, well, and then you say, yes. And then I say, well, why are you a Christian? And you can't tell me why you're a Christian. You're not a Christian. You're just a religious, ignorant person lacking the understanding of what Christ has done. I want to give full honor to his death, burial, and resurrected because he didn't do it for himself. He did it for me. And I want to take every piece of that, every promise of that, every source of that. I want that in my life. I want to realize, I want to know that he dealt with sin and I don't have to deal with it anymore. All I have to do is just consider it dead and remind, and renew my mind daily. Repent, renew. That's what it means. I'm not asking God anything. God's already told me uh, what he's done. I'm just uh, confirming it, that he's, I'm born again and I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit. Boy, isn't that a wonderful word, sealed? Yes. Huh? Sealed. That means sealed. Nothing can get into it. Your flesh ain't going to rob you of your salvation. Where, where sin avails, where it, uh, where it is, uh, grace, God's unconditional love, your new creation, your, the Holy Spirit, the new you will exceed abundantly. Where your flesh fails, it overseeds. Nothing will bring this mountain down. Nothing. You're on a rock. 
Uh, that rock is a metaphor. You're on a promise from God that my son dealt with your sins once and for all. No more do you should be asking God to forgive you. God's already forgave you. That's the, that's the mindset. I have been forgiven. I am a new creation. I've been made perfect. My spirit man is waiting for a new body. This old body is going back to the grave. It still has its nature, and sometimes I give in to it. But I automatically realize that that's not me now. That's death in Christ. And so I re re redirect my thinking. This is the process. When Paul said, I kept the good faith, the good fight of faith, that's what he's saying. He didn't, he, when he says the fight of faith, he wasn't talking about uh, keeping the law. He was talking about realizing what Christ did in the spirit. That's what he kept before him. That's what, it's, it's faith. It's obedience to faith. Faith, not obedience to the law. It's obedience to the faith. It's to the spirit of God. What God's done for you. The position he's put you in. I keep laboring over and over because it's like teaching somebody a new language. You're hearing me right now. And some of you may go nodding your head. You're going, you know what? That makes a little bit of sense. I, I'm going about this the wrong way. I, I'm trying to achieve uh, righteousness and getting brownie points uh, by doing good works. And I didn't realize I was doing that. Uh, yes, that's called uh, self-righteous. God don't like self-righteous. People, oh, they're doing good things, but they're self-righteous. What do you mean? Their motive is wrong. They're trying to get God's attention. They're trying to earn points from him. They're trying to get someplace where maybe God will start listening to their prayers. God has kill, killed your flesh. In his eyes, it is dead. He wants you to see it dead. And he wants you to redirect yourself, build up your inner man by saying, I'm righteous and holy and perfect and sinless before God. All things have been given to me and God will give it to me when I need it. And if I don't need it, he won't give it to me. And you know, I'm in the spirit now and I'm glad with that. I'm happy with that. Don't give me everything I want because I'm not for sure what I want and I'm not for sure if it's good for me. So I'm open to the Lord. You, you're the master. I'm not taking any of this nonsense stuff where I'm in charge and I'm going to tell this person and do this and that. You know what? Jesus didn't do anything unless the Father told him. Do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit that you only lay hands on somebody when the Holy Spirit tells you to do it? When the Holy Spirit tells you to minister to somebody, a stranger, do you do it? Not every stranger, not every person you lay hands on, but are you connected? Do you give when the Holy Spirit tells you to give? Or do you give thinking that you're going to get if you give? God hates that. God hates that. You think you, he, he, he's some kind of mafia guy. You know, you gotta, you gotta pay for, gotta pay for your uh, blessings. Nonsense. You know, God loves you. He dealt with your sin. That's what you should be rejoicing about. That's what you should be happy about. That's what you should say every morning when you get up in the morning. Praise God. I'm heaven bound. Praise God. Heaven lives within me. The Spirit of God dwells in me and he won't leave me. The Holy Spirit will guide me today and strengthen me. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I didn't do a thing to get there, but believe that Christ put me there. It was his effort, his work. Why? That does not take the relief off of you. Does not take the pressure off of you. You've got to learn to separate the two. Separate them. Flesh and spirit. Flesh says, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do more. Gotta, gotta, gotta. And the spirit says, you, I've given you everything. You've got everything, perfect, righteous, holy. Now, let that, let that come out of you, and you'll find that God will guide you. When you say, thank you, God, you made me righteous, that means perfect before him. That means no sin before him. That's what all those words means. It means sinless. He's not blaming you anymore. He took the blame. I can just keep using these words. I'll say them. Mm -hmm. Somebody out there, is going to get it. 
somebody's going to hear this and go, oh my, I have it. I'm righteous. I'm, I still have sin, but God's dealt with my sin in his eyes. And I'm, I, I need to see things through his eyes. Don't dwell on my sins. Don't pray about my sins. Don't give it no attention. Put, put your attentions on what he's done in the flesh and in the spirit. What he's done in the flesh, he's killed it. Amen. Put your eyes on what he's done in the spirit. He made me righteous. God. Honor God. Honor him. Honor him. That's how you can honor the Lord. Acknowledging his gift. Acknowledging his value, his worth. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All righty. I think I've said enough. We'll be back on Sunday. Uh, we have Graceland Web Church at 1.30 Pacific Standard Time. And be glad for you to come on. Uh, if you want to know what we're going to be preaching about, well, this is what we're going to be preaching about. Jesus. We're going to talk about Jesus. Reconciliating Amen. ourselves. How God has Amen. reconciliated Amen. us. God's already done it. You've already been reconciliated Amen. with Christ. I've got scriptures. I've got a whole things of scriptures I was going to read tonight. Yeah. I mean, it just nails it down. Why don't you just believe? Yeah. Why is it so hard? Amen. He doesn't hold one sin against us. Amen. Not Sister, one. preach it. Praise God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can depend on him. You can have confidence in him. You don't have to pay no vow. You don't need to sow no seed. The only thing you need to do is believe God that he loves you. He cares for you. When you pray, instantly he sees your heart and your faith in him. And that's what we want to build up in you. We want the saints to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might because we can't do it within our own selves. Forget that. Just thank the Lord that he has sent the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, which is Father God is in you to to help you through the spirit of God to overcome your flesh. Praise God. We just thank God that when we fail, he, he knows, he knows when we fail and he just instantly, he instantly takes it away because he wants us. He wants that divine precious relationship. We don't have to depend on any guru or somebody tell us you got to do this or you got to do that. And you know what I'm saying? And you know, the baptism of Holy Spirit is something that is a comfort. It's a strength. It gives us power to stand when we don't think we can make it. He helps us make it. You are going to pass every test that he, that may be done to you so you can mature in the spirit of God and be stronger in these days we live in saints be strong in the Lord be strong in the power of his might he's given it to us freely it's freely just take it today and like Roger said get up in the morning thank him thank him for what he's done he's made you a new creation he's given you the spirit of God he's changing us from the inside out and I just thank the God that we have the river of God flowing us to be able to be sensitive to him and his spirit, to speak to someone about this message, set them free. Let the Lord set them free through you, through the Holy Ghost, uh, speaking how he's made you free in this. Speak up, speak up and be free today. You don't have to go get in any line anymore. Forget that line. Jesus has already went to the cross. He's done it one time, one time only for us. And we, he's not going to do it again. And we got to receive it. We need to receive it. We need to love him, show our love by having the love and acceptance and forgiveness that he's given us. Take it because it's yours right now, right now, wherever you are, no matter how you are, what condition you're in. He doesn't look at that. He looks at the heart. He knows that you need him and he wants you right now today. Accept it. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. They have the Spirit of God, the Holy amen. Ghost amen. within them. Thank you, Lord. Yes, amen. Amen. You know the old traditional way. Let's have an altar call. Everybody come up here and ask God to forgive them again. Uh, how many have been in places like that? And the, the whole church keeps coming up every week. Oh. The whole church comes up and then we do a confession together. God forgive us our sins, Lord, and, you know, help us and so forth. What's wrong with that? 
You think I'm going to do that right now? <laughs> if you didn't, if you got what I was talking about, you repented. You realized yes. right away that you've been believing you. the wrong yes. way, that God's already done everything for you. And now you need to start yes. saying it. I'm the righteousness of God. Yes. He's done it for me. He's Praise done it. God. You see, yes. and you don't realize that when I'm preaching or when you're Thank ministering, you. People are repenting. They're saying they're wrong, the wrong way. And all of a sudden they start acknowledging the right way. As soon as they change that way of thinking, that's repentance. That means change. That's all the word means. It doesn't mean ask God anything. Look it up. It don't mean asking for nothing. It means change. You've been thinking the wrong way. Now you're thinking the right way. That's. I'm hoping that somebody out there has repented. Now you're thinking the right way. And now here's the thing. Start saying it over your life. The lion stinking flesh is going to tell you uh, that it's crazy. But you've got to recognize the flesh from the spirit. Recognize it. Yes. Recognize it when it's yes. when it starts trying to bring you down, bring up your sin, bring up yes. your faults. Recognize it and say no to it, you lying devil. You see, that's the way I used to be. That's why I gave in to that, yes. But it won't touch who I am now. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus made perfect and righteous. Listen, you can only think one thing at a time. The more you think who you are now, perfect before God and sealed by the Holy Spirit, the more you think that, the more you'll be as a man thinks, so shall he be. Boy, think that you're righteous and you'll be righteous. Think now, uh, You're not making yourself righteous. You're just getting rooted. God's already done it. You're not making nothing happen yes. by saying it. I want to make yes. that clear. But by your repeating it and saying it over and over, yes. you're getting rooted in a truth that's 2,000 years old. <laughs> Can you believe that? God. This is a truth of oh, new God. birth, new creation, yes. Holy Spirit yes. dwelling in man. Man been yes. cleansed. God made you holy, perfect. Yes. 2,000 year old message. What happened to it? Think about it, saints. What happened? I go into churches and I do a survey if I get an opportunity. And I'll say to the people, how many has been serving the Lord for over a year? And hands go up. How many of you know anybody righteous and holy and perfect before the Lord? Nobody raises their hands. Why aren't they raising their hands? Because they don't know about the Holy Spirit living, dwelling, new birth, new creation, the new identity. They're identifying with their flesh because they can't raise their hands because they're still looking at their flesh. Are you one of those people? Are you one of those? If I asked you that question, do you know of a righteous, holy, perfect person before God? Are you one of those persons that would say, no, I'm not me. I, I don't know. Uh, only Jesus was. Are you kidding me? Jesus came to give you that position. Yes. You unbeliever. Doctrines of devils out there. You're set in places that don't teach yes. you the truth. Yes, God. That's right. I'm sorry to say, Thank but you. if you don't know what I'm talking about, Thank you, Lord. Help pity you. Hallelujah. Why do you Thank think you. I'm on here laboring Thank right you. now? Thank you, Lord. I want to help you. I want you to start believing in God and what God's done. That's Amen. what I want. Amen. I want you to know you got everything. Yes, you do. I don't want I don't want you yes, codependent you on nobody. Yes. A bunch of dumb Thank sheep. You, I've Thank seen you, so many Lord. dumb sheep. They go in, set into a service, hear some great music, and hear a preacher talk and and talk about morality and doing this and doing that and being a better person. And give a, their Bible stories for kids. And they go home. I, I went home with people that I had relatives. And I've asked them, do you know, can you tell me what the pastor said today? Um, yeah, I, I no. Unless it was a joke. If it was a good joke, they can remember the joke. But otherwise, they don't remember nothing. But they felt like they done something. You didn't do anything. You're just as dead when you went there as you come out. You'll have, you won't see any miracles in your life. It only comes when you believe in Jesus take, tucking, taking your sins from you. Yes. You've been made pure. Yes. You've been made holy. Yes. You're a new birth. 
Not your flesh, yes, we are. but your spirit. Yeah. Flesh is flesh, yeah. spirit is spirit. Yeah. Jesus says that to Nicodemus. Look it up. I hope, uh, I pray. I pray the Spirit of God right now will work, will come to you yes. and open your mind and open your eyes right now. Father, I just pray this in the name of Jesus. You know those that need to be saved, Lord. You know those that, that have a heart for you, but they've been confused. They've been upset. They've been in the wrong situation. Yes, Lord Jesus, right now. And they've been seeking truth. And they've been going to and fro, looking at books and book series and looking at another tape series, going to another conference, Jesus. never coming Jesus. to the understanding, never coming to the knowledge that God's done it all. Oh, you are complete God. in Christ. Yes, that is gift to you.